Hello and welcome to RC Model Reviews and this time I'm looking at the Free Sky Telemetry dashboard and hub and some of the sensors too. Now what I've got here is the basic telemetry hub which is a tiny little box. I'll put the receiver next to it so you can see just how big it is. There's a, a standard 8 channel receiver. Excuse all the wires, there's actually a lot of wiring involved in this. So there we go, it's about as wide, not quite as long and it's certainly a lot thinner than the receiver so there's not a lot of weight in it either it's, it's probably mm, I'd say maybe five or six grams if that and that's the hub so into that all the sensors will connect you can see we've got uh, obviously inputs there for GPS for the Vario input voltage RPM and all sorts of other bits and pieces of fuel sensor and so forth so what I've got here from FreeSky are several sensors I have this one which is the temperature sensor it's just a little loop of wire with a, a thermistor in there probably and you can have up to two temperature sensors. I also have the GPS sensor here, which is clearly labelled up, and that's the side that goes to the top. So when you're in flying inverted, it probably won't work. But that's the GPS sensor. Again, it's pretty small. It's wrapped in heat shrinks. It's a bit heavier, maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 grams, something like that. And finally, we have this, which is the RPM sensor. And that's a, a little photo transistor or photo diode on a circuit board, which works by measuring the pulses from the propeller so it's like a one of those optical tachometers you might buy from Hobby Kawa Tower or somewhere like that so that's the the three sensors that I have connected and um, the hub itself plugs into the receiver by way of a cable that goes in the side and if you've got a free sky telemetry enabled receiver you'll know what those plugs are and but there's also another connector you need to make this all work because you need to provide power to the hub it doesn't come through this lead which is a bit silly because I thought they would have made up a set of leads you could get the power through to it as well so you've got to have a lead which is basically two of these that's your standard servo connector so it's not an extension because you have the same plug on each end one end goes into a spare channel on your receiver or if you haven't got any spare channels you have to put a Y connector in there and the other end plugs into the dashboard here in this little connection there making sure you get it the right way around and a bit hard to do one handed because I'm holding the camera so I'll just pop that in and now we'll fire it up and see what it looks like for the purposes of this review I've got the whole thing set out on my desk here I've got the receiver a hub and I've got just a, a standard I think it's a two cell lithium battery here two cell LIFE or A123 pack and I can turn the whole thing on there we go you can see the receiver isn't bound because the transmitter is not on but there's a little green light going on inside the telemetry hub that means everything is connected and the power is on so let's have a look at the transmitter and the dashboard side of things now this is where things get interesting because when I first received this telemetry dashboard here I thought oh that's great it must have a connector on the back that'll plug into the telemetry module on the transmitter but it doesn't it has actually three wires and these three wires are positive negative and ppm so there's actually a transmitter module built into or a transmitter board built into the telemetry dashboard so if you've already got the two-way module or the two-way DIY kit then you don't need it because this has everything built into it in fact if you've got the module or the DIY kit you can't use this without basically making those other bits redundant so what I've done in this case is I've just made up a little connector here which has my wires I can plug it into the module socket on the back here for testing because what you'd normally do is wire this in permanently. Now I've got a 9X radio, it's got IMAX on it, but it's the same as the Turnergy 9X. It's an older one that was sold by IMAX. The Turnergy is a better radio, it has better software in it. And I've mounted the telemetry dashboard on the top. It clamps to the antenna like that. Not a very, in this case, not a very good setup. I would mount it differently if I was going to use it long term. They say you can clamp it to the handle, but if you do that, I don't see how you can actually see the screen because it would be at the wrong angle. Never mind, it does actually tilt. So you can tilt it up and down so you can get a good angle to view it and so if you're normally holding your transmitter like this this is probably about the best angle because you it'll be straight on to you and then we're all ready to go so I will turn it on and we can have a look at uh, what comes up on that screen there we go that's the free sky let just let me zoom in here we'll try and get it all centered on the camera that's the standard startup screen on the FreeSky telemetry dashboard. There are two options on the screen. We've got data or menu. Menu enables us to set up some of the functions like what mode we're in because we can switch between the one-way mode, the two-way mode. We can go into range test mode. We can go into bind mode. There's a few, quite a few little options on the, um, on the menu option, but we're not going to use those because I'm not going to give you a blow-by-blow blow how you do it set up at the stage. I just want to show you what this will do. So there's a little switch here which you can go up and down to select an option and you press it to 
go into the next screen. There we go. At the moment it's showing what would normally be two different voltages. Now I've got no voltage sensors plugged in to the receiver or the telemetry hub, so this is just floating voltages that happen to be around. It's meaningless, but I would normally be using this to monitor, say, my receiver pack and my LiPo pack or whatever, or two LiPo packs, whatever, by setting up the relevant wiring and voltage dividers on the model. And in saying that, the, the Free Sky system is a bit different to the Spectrum and the others. It's a, a little bit more get your hands dirty. If you want to get into measuring voltages, you've got to set up the little boards with the resistors and, and do it that way. It's not quite as easy, but the result is that it can be a lot more flexible. Now, there we go. Um, we have the ability to move on to another screen. When we move on to the next screen, we can see that in this case, uh, we have a lot of information here, but to be quite honest, a lot of it is pretty much useless. We've got acceleration in, in three axes, X, Y, and Z. Now, the, there is an accelerometer sensor available for the free sky, which will measure the acceleration in any of the three axes. And I guess if you were building a pylon racer and you wanted to know how many Gs it was pulling at the first turn, that would be handy. But for the average model flyer, I can't see a lot of application for that, really, to be totally honest. Down here, we've got speed, we've got RPM, and we've got altitude. Now, for some reason, it keeps telling me I'm at 112 meters of altitude, which I have no idea why, because right now the GPS hasn't had a chance to get any, any satellites. And um, I know that we're actually at about 300 meters of altitude. So why that figure comes up there, I do not know. Uh, but we do have um, the speed sensor, the, the the tachometer sensor that I had before. If I can position this properly, I may be able to pick up the the light from... No, nah, it's not going to happen. Oh, yeah, there we go. This should go to 6,000 RPM, if I can get the angle just right. Because what I'm doing is I'm picking up... There we go. I'm picking up the fluctuating light from the bulb in this room, that big dolphin-killing incandescent bulb. And 50 hertz, which is what we run here in New Zealand, happens to correspond to 6,000 RPM. So you can see that the RPM sensor is actually working just fine and dandy. By shining at a light bulb, I can see 6,000 RPM. Um, speed is zero, of course, um, as I mentioned the altitude. There's one cool thing on here, relatively cool. You can actually use the little lever here to go down to the R and select relative, which means when I press this, now the altitude is not the actual true altitude above sea level, it's the altitude above or below where we started. So it's a relative altitude. So now, if I'm on the ground and I take off and I fly up to 100 meters, it'll say 100, instead of saying the 300 I'm already at, plus the 100 I'm gaining, which would be 400 above sea level, it'll just show me the above ground level altitude. That's pretty cool, that's nice. Now there's another screen here, which we'll go on to, and this shows us temperature sensors. Now, as I say, there's two temperature sensor inputs. It also shows us our latitude and longitude. At the moment, that's zero because I'm inside. The GPS hasn't got any lock. Here's the GPS. It can't lock because I'm under a steel or a tin roof, a galvanized iron roof, so it can't pick up any signal. Um, and But the temperature sensor is going. If I find it on the bench here amongst all the rubbish, and it says 23 degrees. If I hold onto it in my hot little hand, it should go up by a degree. Or, there we go, 24. So... I'm not very hot, but it just went up to 24 to 25. So because I'm holding that sensor in my hand, the temperature's changing. And see, that works very well. Now, why would you want a temperature sensor? Well, that's fairly simple too. You can keep an eye on your battery, your ESC, or anything else in your model that might be getting hot, even the uh, cylinder head temperature of your nitro motor or your gas motor. So that's quite handy. But we'll go back a bit to the previous screen, then one more. Now, this speed thing here. I've done some tests walking around with the receiver. And I can see one thing that doesn't look very good at all. And that is the, the frequency with which the speed information is updated. It looks as if it's only updated once every five seconds. And that's pretty damn useless. Because if you're flying your model, you don't want to know how fast it was going five seconds ago. Or how fast it's going to go in five seconds time. You want to know how fast it's flying right now. If you're trying to get you know, tune it for maximum speed, it may only get that maximum speed for a very short period of time. And if it happens to miss it, the telemetry doesn't pick it up because it's only looking every five seconds, then that's pretty useless. So they could have made it a lot more rapid in the polling time for that. Now, the other thing that, where are we? Up here, I forgot to mention, it has a little fuel gauge because you can get a fuel gauge sensor for your nitro E gas planes. It'll tell you how much fuel is left in your tank. But again, I'm a little bit dubious as to how effective that is because depending on the angle of the model, depending on its attitude, that sensor will probably give you a wildly varying reading. You know, like with your, your car, if you drive down a hill, sometimes the fuel gauge reads lower than if you're driving up a hill. Same sort of thing, but it'll give you a rough indication, I suppose. So there's basically the, the telemetry dashboard as it appears on your transmitter. And what we've got to do now, of course, is take this to the field, 
stick it in the model and fly the snot out of it. So that'll be the next video. That'll be part two of the free sky telemetry test. Stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And also on the website fairly soon, I'll be having some web articles, which will go into a little more depth than these videos on the free sky telemetry system. Thanks for watching.